usually our goal in engineering economy is to be able to not just analyze one project by itself, but analyze a project against competing projects and alternatives. For example, you are, you are in a company and you are running the project based on the current cash flow and so on, and then you come up with an idea or someone comes up with an idea or a proposal that if you invest in this specific machine, your revenue will be this much more. Well, in that case, you need to be able to compare these two cases together and say, should I stay with the current uh, work or should I go with a new proposal? You are comparing alternatives. In comparison of alternatives, the work is pretty much the same thing that we have done so far which means you will bring all the cash flows to one specific point, whether it's present or future or annuity, whatever. I personally rather to bring everything to the present worth and then compare these present worth together. However, the key in here is that there has to be a basis for comparison. You cannot compare a project which its lifetime is seven years with a project whose lifetime is five years. That comparison doesn't make sense and doesn't hold the ground. So in this case, our intention and our goal is to compare apples with apples, oranges with oranges, not apples with oranges, because they are different type. So the key in here, in, in comparison of alternatives, in this compare, comparing of these different projects or proposals that we have, is to make sure that they, first of all, they are over the same number of years, first of all, they are the, over the same number of years, and then they, we compare the same thing, present worth of this project with the present worth of that project, future worth of that project with future worth of that project. And we are not talking like trivial cases. This is an alternative for 10 years. Each year you will make $1,200 and you invest $5,000. Against an alternative like this, you invest $5,000. For 10 years, you will make 1500 there's no comparison between these two. This is a trivial case. We are not talking about cases like this. We are talking about cases in which there's no trivial look at the project. For example, this may be you invest 6,000, you, you make uh, 1,500, but also at this year you have to invest another 2,000. But now these two are not easily recognizable. There's no trivial case in this case. The only way to approach these alternatives is to move everything to one point find the present worth of this project, find the present worth 
of that alternative and then you can compare the numbers. You say present worth of this is larger than this so it is a better alternative to select. The other thing that we always have in these uh, problems is that what about a case like this that you invest 6,000 in here and you will have this 1,500, um, this one 2,000 and then that one up to year 12, 1,000. What about something like this? Well, in that case, remember, we, all have, we have to bring everything to the present worth. So we can do that in here, we can do that in here, we can do that in here. But we cannot compare this project with these two projects. This alternative is different than those alternatives. Because this alternative has a different lifetime. The N is different for this alternative than these two alternatives. So our job basically is to find the present worth, future worth or annuity, whatever you want, you like. I'll go with the present worth. Find the present worth of the project provided that they have the same number of years for the lifetime of the project. If they don't have the same lifetime, what would we do in, in those cases? The traditional approach is to make sure that you are looking at the alternatives with the same number of years as the lifetime. Well, this is 10, this is 12, and they don't have the same number of years. So in engineering economy, the idea is try to repeat the projects, try to repeat the projects after they are done. So for example, for that first one, instead of going here 5,000 and in here 1,200 for 10 years. I'm going to repeat that again. I will assume that at the end of 10 years, I will reinvest another 5,000 and I will get the same cash flow until the year 20. And I will repeat that process and I will repeat that process and I would repeat that process until I get to a point at which this n number of years is the same as repetition of those same number of years. Do you know what number I'm looking at? Between 10 and 12. I'm looking at the number that is divisible to both of them and that is 60.
So if I repeat this one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, at the end of six time, I will have 60 years. If I repeat this one time, two time, three time, four time, and five times, I will get them to be the same number of years. So, so the first essential key point in this is that they should have the same life cycle such that you can compare. Now I can compare this with, with that, 40, 50, and 60. Now I can compare this with this. And I can bring everything to, to one point, to the present worth like for example in this case, and compare the present worth of both alternatives. So you find a number of the years that is divisible to both of them. This is 60 over 10, that's six times it needs to be re repeated and 60 over 12, five times need to be repeated. The key question of course in here is what are the conditions of repetition? And those are the ones that need to be expressed. How can you repeat that project? Sometimes they say the project can be repeated the same as original one at the end of its life cycle. In that case, this is going to be like that, next it would be like that, next it would be like that, next it would be like that until year 60 that ends. Sometimes they tell you that the project can be repeated with a 10% increase in the investment and 15% increase in the income. Which means you can repeat this but this number will not be 5,000, maybe it will be 6,000. This will not be 1,200, maybe it will be 1,400. They tell you what the conditions are. Those conditions usually are related to the inflation and rise in the cost of living and, and so on. So they get an estimate and they do work based on that. So we are going to do a couple of examples together to see how we're doing. Let's get two alternatives. Project A. are 12 percent compounded annually. First project, very simple case, 6,000 investment, 2,000 monthly until year five. Project B has individual payments and transactions. Both cash flow are clear. There's nothing complicated about them. However, the comparison is not possible because the life of this project is 10 years, life of that project is 5 years. We can only compare if their lifetime is the same. So in this case, in this case, we have to make sure that the projects are repeated until the, you get the same life cycle on both of them. In this case, you look at the N for the first one, you look at the N for the second one. It's 5 and 10. 
apparently 10 is divisible to both of them. So the only thing that I need to do is to repeat that first one again. Which means after the five years, reinvest $6,000 and get that much income. Again, it has to be specifically stated that you can repeat the project at the end of its lifetime with the same conditions. If conditions are different, then this second one will be different. So we are going to repeat the projects. And to repeat the projects, I'm just going to add the second part of it using a different color. That 10 years. At this point, I have to invest 6,000 and in here I will get that. It would be the same 2,000 in here. Now that both of them have the same lifetime, I can make the comparison. So I'm going to find the present worth of, of these. The first thing that you should know is that this is repeated up to here and this is repeated up to here. I can find the present worth in, he, in this point. I can find the present worth at this point and then move it up there. But you also note that this is at year five, this is at year six. This really is like a continuous thing. So this is really like something like that. So I'm going to write the present worth of project A, which is going to be minus 6,000 plus 2,000 times P A 12% and 10 years. Minus 6,000 P F 12% and five years. This is that number which is at year zero. This converts this series to the year zero. This converts this number to year zero. Present worth of project B is going to be minus 4,000 plus 5,000 PF 12% and 2 plus 2,000 PF 12% and 4 minus 4,000 P, F, 12% and 6 plus 3,500 P, F, 12% and uh, 8 plus 3,000 P, F, 12% and 10. Now how would I write this if I didn't have this knowledge that this is the same thing? How would I write that? If I K 
kept it like this, if I kept it like that, how would I write that? What would the difference be in here? I'm going to write it in red. It would be minus 6,000 plus 2,000 times PA 12% and 5 plus 2,000 PA 12% and 5 that's for this one which will bring it to this year and then I have to move it back to the present worth so this will be multiplied by PF 12% and 5 minus 6,000 PF 12% and 5. This is another way of writing that. I said, last time I said, oh, I know that these are next two years right after each other, so this is a connected thing actually. But in this case I said, well, I didn't realize that. I said, I'm going to convert this to year zero. That's 2000 PA, 12% and five, because that's five years. And then on this part, the same thing. I'm going to convert this to this point, which is year five. Uh, one, so one For this one? Yes. Uh, sorry, go ahead. What? $1,895.88. And 88 cents. That's right. Okay. You got the same thing? Okay. Okay. If you do this, you will get the same thing too. Now, uh, for B, anybody did B? So the comparison of alternatives is very simple. What makes it sometimes complicated is that there may be different conditions. There may be different conditions, in which case you have to come up with the new conditions and see what those conditions are. So we are going to do one all together. Um, let's do project A. One is six and one is eight. How many times we need to repeat that? What's the number that is divisible to both of them? So six and eight, how many times do you need to repeat that? Six, four times. Six, four times. Four times is 24. The, the golden number is 24, which is divisible to both of them. So how many times do you need to repeat the first project? Four times. How many times you need to repeat the second project? Three. So we did the first part. The second part is to actually draw one of the cash flows. For project A, what is the cash flow? Is zero, it goes to six. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. What about the second one? The second one is for eight years.
So these are the cash flows. Generally, there are two approaches that you can take. You can repeat all these things for those many years. That one for four times. One, two, three, four times. This one for three times. That one and that one. To get 24 years for both of them. So that would be 24, that would be 24. You can do this and then you can compare the big picture. Or if they are repeated with the same condition, you can do only one of them, find the present worth of one of them, and then if you find the present worth of this, at this point, it will give you a number. It's going to be the same number which is going to be here, which is going to be here, which is going to be here. Because this is exactly like that. And when you do present worth, it will give you something like that. So let's find the, find the values for, for this one. For project A, present worth of A is going to be minus 9,000. For this one, plus what? Plus 2500 PA 12% and 6. That's this part of it. That's this part of it. And then the G part of it, that triangle, is going to be plus G, which is given to be 1,000 times P given G, 12% and 6. There is also an investment in year three, which will be minus 2,000 PF, 12% and three. This value for the second one is straightforward, so we are going to have present worth of B to be minus 13,000 plus 2,500 P given A, P given A for 12% and how many years? Seven years plus this one, plus 1,500 P given F, P given F um, of eight years, 12% and eight years. 15,300 96.54 for that one. 10,000 715.22. Okay. This is just for one. For six years and for one for eight years. Now that I have that, when I repeat this project, 
it would look like this. I'm going to erase all these things. And I'm going to put a, um, that's positive, 15,000. 15,000, nine, six, three, nine, six. Three, nine, six, and 15,396, and 15,396 and 15,396. For this one, for this one, I will replace these. I will replace these with 10,000. Seven one five ten thousand seven one five ten thousand seven one five so so this thing came here, this thing came here, this thing came here, this thing came there. The first project, this number is 8,000? 8, okay, okay. 8,785.1? Negative 980. $4.78. Four dollars and seventy-eight cents. Okay. So the second one is all the way back down here. Okay. So the second one is all the way back down here. And those numbers are not fifteen. Something they are, they are eight seven five eight seven eight five point one. Okay, so so this will be this number plus this number times what? Um, P of F for six years. For six years, this one is. P of F4, 12 years. This one is P of F4, 18 years. This one is this number, this number P of F, 8 years. This number P of F, 16 years. Okay. But in this case, the comparison is trivial. Why is it trivial? Because these are all negative numbers. Whatever those numbers are, they are positive numbers. <laughs> so this is better than that.